Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of true crime stuff that I wanted to chat with you guys about. Today we are going to be doing a true crime story that I came across a couple days ago. I've actually never heard of it before. It is a high profile case in Japan that I've never heard about, but maybe you guys haven't heard about it either. So let's just chat about it. It is called the Wakayama Curry Incident. Now you guys know I watch a lot of true crime, so I was super surprised to hear about one that was as high profile as this and I've never heard about before. And of course the title of it, it made me really hungry. When I first came across the story, it was like curry incident. I was like, ooh, curry, yum. But then I found out what actually happened and it's like, oh yeah. Anyone else also get really hungry whenever you see food, but like in written words? Yeah, that's me right there. Okay, so I just wanna preface this just a little bit, just to kind of get you guys in the mindset, in the mood, in the vibe, okay? You're at a Japanese summer festival with your friends, your family. The sun is out, the weather's finally getting warmer. You hear children laughing nearby, there are people chattering. What really gets your attention is the food. In the air, you smell takoyaki, you know, those little ball morsels filled with octopus. The sweet smell of the bronze sauce that they put on top. What really gets your attention is the curry. It's mildly pungent, it's rich, it's savory. The smell convinces you to buy a bowl. And you do. You sit down, getting ready to devour it. But then you look around and you realize that people around you are getting sick. Some are puking, some have headaches, some can barely even stand up. Like this is just freaking awful. Imagine just going to a festival and you're trying to enjoy yourself with your friends and family and then this is happening, like what the hell? Uh, the town was shocked and a few had an inkling about who the culprit might be. We're gonna take a look at Masumi Hayashi, who was a former insurance agent. Uh, she was a mother of four. She was married to a man named Kenji, who was also the father of their children. They lived together in the Wakayama prefecture in Japan. Now her and her family, they mostly just kind of kept with themselves. Uh, the neighbors would say that the Hayashis did live pretty lavishly compared to the other neighbors. Uh, they had a pretty nice house. They had a really large Japanese garden that was like fully furnished. They drove a BMW. And of course, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. However, it's the mannerisms that rub the neighbors the wrong way. It seems like the community was really super tight knit. Wait, really super, why does it, why do I talk like that? It seems like the community was really tight knit. You know how like the small communities you guys ever grew up in one when you're younger, Everyone kind of knows each other. You know each other's businesses. The kids all play with each other. The parents sometimes got together. Uh, they attended each other's school functions. Sometimes would babysit for each other and they would just do stuff together. However, Masumi and Kenji, they just refused to socialize with their neighbors. They wouldn't even allow their kids to play with the other kids in the neighborhood. So like the neighbors that knew them said they didn't really get along with any of the other neighbors. They kind of just kept to themselves. Another neighbor did mention that Masumi would drive in her BMW and like irately honk at like her neighbors or something because she was really impatient and the cars were in her way. Uh, this rift obviously caused a chasm between her and her neighbors. And so she was never really accepted as a part of their community. And, but you know what? It seems like she didn't want to be a part of it anyway. Now we're going to go to July 25th, 1998. Whoa, this was a while ago. I think it was like third grade during this time. It was the Masuri Festival, which is the summer festival in Japan. And the community, they all came together to set up for everything and to prepare for the food. Uh, the pots of curry were being made inside the garage area. And of course, Masumi, you know, because she never really participated with anything anyways in the neighborhood, she was alienated from the festival preparations. But for some reason, maybe she was infuriated by this. She did volunteer to help with everything. They allowed her. I did find one source that mentioned that it was, they thought it was kind of weird that Masumi was fervently volunteering to oversee the curry preparation. Another witness mentioned seeing her like pace back and forth between the curry pots as if she were a bear, I guess. Uh, during the festival, people began to show symptoms like vomiting. They had like severe heart pain and they initially thought it was severe food poisoning. Like, I don't know if you guys ever had food poisoning before, but I've gotten food poisoning so many times and even had food poisoning at a restaurant that I used to work at, okay? It is horrible. It really feels like you're in like the worst pain ever. Things are coming out of both ends, sorry TMI. And it's just really painful. It feels like you're just, everything just sucks. So I could totally sympathize with them. However, I've never been poisoned before. I don't know how severe the pain would have been, but I'm sure it was really bad. Like probably food poisoning times like a million. Later on, they did thought it was cyanide poisoning for some reason. About over 60 people fell ill during this time. And unfortunately, 
four people passed away. It was two adults and two children. A week later, authorities found traces of arsenic in the curry rice pot. And investigation took over about like two months. They weren't able to find any culprit at the moment. However, three months later, they would finally arrest the Hayashis at their resident. At their residence. Residence, right? Yeah, it's residence. I get words mixed up all the time. So Masumi Hayashi, she was accused of poisoning the curry with arsenic. But to me, wouldn't she realize that the villagers would suspect something if she all of a sudden decided to assist with the food prep for the festival? Or maybe remember that she was really eager to help with the curry. Another thing that came to my mind as well was why would she care that she wasn't part of the festival? She didn't want to mingle with her community anyways. Or maybe to Masumi, maybe she thought it was a personal attack against her and her family that they didn't include her as a part of the festival because maybe she didn't want to mingle with her neighbors, but the festival was still seen as something really important that she wanted to participate in. I don't know, maybe. We don't know her mindset. We don't know what went on in her head at the time. We can only make assumptions. Then there was also the arsenic. Where did she get it from? Well, aside from the aloofness of the Hayashis that rubbed the neighbors the wrong way, Masumi was also alone with the curry for a period of time. I think they mentioned it was around like 40 minutes. Uh, the community mainly also suspected her because her husband previously owned an extermination company where that same arsenic was readily accessible to Masumi. Now, Masumi was charged with attempted murder and the murder of four people. But what about her husband? Because he was arrested too. Well, he was charged with fraud, but we'll get to that in a minute. So it's between the time of like 12 o'clock to one where prosecutors would say that Masumi was alone with the curry pot. Uh, she would go back home and retrieve about like 100 grams of arsenic in a blue paper cup. This was enough to kill about a hundred. I think it was, wait, was it a thousand? It might've been a thousand. Did I get it wrong? It might've been a thousand. Ah, because a hundred doesn't sound right. Let me just Google it real quick. I don't want to mess it up. Sumi arsenic, a thousand. Okay. Wikipedia says a thousand, a thousand. I knew it was off. All right, it was a thousand. I'm glad that I looked it up. You know when like you're wrong about something and you don't really know that you're wrong, but there's like a gut feeling that you get that just feels like it's not right. That's what I just had. <laughs> <laughs> they said that she went back home to retrieve about a thousand grams of arsenic, which is enough to kill about a hundred people. A hundred people, that's a lot of people. So she took it and mixed it into the curry without anyone seeing, because there's no actual eyewitness testimony seeing her do this. Uh, when they did later do some testing though, they did find some arsenic residue in her hair. They found some arsenic in her household as well. And then also at the festival, they did find arsenic in a blue paper cup. Uh, she pleaded not guilty as evidence was purely circumstantial. Now, circumstantial because there was no direct evidence at her. However, she did have a history of insurance fraud in the past that they believed or they alleged that arsenic was used. Keyword, alleged. February 97, this is about a year before the festival takes place. Uh, it's alleged that she fed her husband, Kenji, food that was tainted with arsenic. He got sick and right before that happened, she purchased life insurance on him. Yes, they're accusing her of attempting to murder her husband previously. June of 97, a tenant staying with the family, they fell ill. Insurance company paid for medical expenses, but it is said that Masumi pocketed about 5 million yen. Again, they allege the tenant may have been poisoned with arsenic. Of March of 98, which is literally like, wait, March of 98, so that's like a year later. Okay, now this is the same year as the festival. It's alleged that Masumi poisoned a bowl of noodles. Now I can't look at the bowl of noodles the same way, God damn it, with arsenic and gave it to an acquaintance where they later fell ill again. And it was said that Masumi had taken life insurance policy on that same person. So the prosecutors, they believe that these incidents in the past was involved with the intent of using arsenic for harming someone for financial gains. Now they use these incidents to try to establish a pattern of behavior. But again, I do want to emphasize this. She's never confessed to any of this. The avarice of the couple is admitted when they pleaded guilty to three cases of fraud but it didn't involve any arsenic. Uh, the couple lied and claimed Kenji had lost functionality in his arms and his legs, and he was illegally collecting disability insurance. Uh, Kenji was sentenced six years in prison for this. To this day, she still argues that she is innocent. There's never been a confession that she's ever given, and she's only claimed responsibility for the insurance frauds. I can sympathize with the victims, the family of the victims. This is an egregious crime. It was indiscriminate. 
meaning that the victims were possibly on the end of someone's anger and they didn't even do anything, you know? It really does look bad for Masumi though. Out of the four women that were handling the curry, Masumi was the only one who didn't consume the curry. She didn't get sick. But like I said, the evidence in court were circumstantial. The judge did convict her as guilty and sentence her to death. I believe he spent about like seven hours explaining all these circumstantial evidence and stuff and the reason why he wanted to convict her as guilty. Do you think that circumstantial evidence warrants a guilty verdict with a death sentence for Masumi? Your honest opinions, your honest thoughts. So I wanna talk about the family now. We're gonna take a look at Kenji, the husband. He is out of jail now, he served his sentence. He does maintain that he believes his wife is innocent. The eldest son has also written a book about this incident. He's mentioned that his recollection of his mother, his childhood were actually good. He couldn't have imagined his mother that he knew back then would be capable of doing the things that she's accused of. He still does visit her on a monthly basis from an article that I read. And he is convinced that his mother's not guilty. Now, this is more of like a sad twist. However, it's not directly related to the incident, maybe as a byproduct, just maybe, right? On June 9 of 2021, which is not even that long ago, it was like less than a year ago, 37 year old Japanese woman jumped off the Kansai airport bridge and she left off the bridge with her four year old daughter in her arms. Authorities found their bodies 40 minutes later. It was found in the waters below. Uh, the woman, she was the eldest daughter of Masumi and Kenji. That same day, she had called emergency services to say that her other daughter, 16-year-old teenager, had collapsed and was coughing out blood. That daughter was transported to the hospital and was later confirmed dead. Uh, reports would say that she was pretty badly beaten. There were some bruises all over her body and not just like fresh bruises, but like old bruises as well. They suspected that it was child abuse. It seems that... Afterwards, the father also tried to commit suicide, but he failed to do so. It's not really quite clear from the articles that I read whether the abuse was from both parents or maybe just one parent. It seems like a couple years before that, there was an investigation regarding child abuse, but then they end up siding with the, the parents. It's just really some really sad stuff. Masumi is still awaiting her death sentence where one day she will be hung. Yes, in Japan, the death penalty they're still doing it the old fashioned way. It's not through chemical injections, you get hung. But you know what? However, the convict does not know an exact date when the hanging will take place. They are only given a two hour notice prior. And it seems like everyone, okay, okay. that the town didn't want to bother to include her in the, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to beat my phone. 